Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Chris Swift. Let's take a look and see how we're trading the grain markets now. We hadn't done very much so far this morning, and a little bit of a change. We're not too awful bad now. May's just down a quarter at 435 and a quarter. The July contract down three quarters at 448 and a half. In December, 474 even, down three quarters. Let's see if our beans have put on any more premium. They were a little bit firmer and they've double digit now, up 12 and a quarter on the May at 11.98. The July contract, 12.11, up 11 and a half. And the Novi beans, 11.93, up 10 and a half. We'll keep rooting them on. See what the wheat market's doing here. Start off with Chicago up two on the May at 5.59 even. July up one and a quarter at 5.74 even. December wheat up one and a quarter at 611 and three quarters. KC hard red winter. See if it's improving a little bit. And it's come off the lows a little bit. I got May down three quarters at 574 and three quarters. The July contract down three and a half at 567 and a quarter. Take a look at our spring wheat, Minneapolis. And it's down one and a half on the May at 633 and a quarter. It looks like they're going to get some of that moisture up there that Tim was talking about earlier. July down one and a quarter at 643 and a quarter. And new crop December down one and three quarters at 668 and three quarters. I want to invite my guest in, Ben Hush, and he is within the mill. And he is up in northeastern part of the United States. And Ben, that is an awfully pretty wheat field you are standing in there, sir. Good morning. How's everything in Nashville? I, I tell know, you, it, uh, it's dry right now and going to get a little wetter. Well, let me tell you, we're uh, wet and getting wetter. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty interesting. Had a solid inch of rain yesterday. Uh, everybody wants to get back out in these wheat fields to put the second application of nitrogen on. And it's uh, not going to happen this week because uh, pretty much what Tim Ross just said We've got another wave coming, supposed to end up with an inch today, maybe another inch tomorrow, likely no sunshine till Friday. So uh, certainly a little bit cool, probably back down in the mid 40s. So that has slowed some things down, but it has not slowed the mind of the farmer who says it's April and I got to go. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. So let me ask you this. If it does set it back just a little bit, maybe a week, week and a half, something like that? Yes. It, you know, the concern, and again, farmers are the eternal optimists and those in agriculture, uh, but they also have a deep set worry in, in many folks in agriculture. And you go, well, we lost a week here. That's okay. We haven't lost anything. We haven't lost any yield. We really haven't lost any opportunity, but you start thinking, well, what if next week's the same? And what if the following week's the same? <laughs> so uh, I don't, we certainly haven't heard anything here. And one of the beautiful things about the rain we had yesterday and so far today, driving along with all the no-till and cover crop, we're not seeing any mud out in the field. So they're just nice, gentle, pretty much all day rains. Not raining at the moment, but uh, looks like it will here any minute. All right. Well, this may be swapping horses on you just a little bit, but it's still pretty much in the news. The uh, the Baltimore Bridge, have they begun to open up some of that to allow some shipping back into there? So there is story on the news this morning that there's been a little bit of an opening created. Again, no idea what size that is. We received communication last night from the Secretary of Agriculture in Maryland, Kevin Attucks, requesting the size of a typical boat, uh, like the urea boat and the liquid nitrogen boat. So we're gathering a little bit of that information to get back to him because they certainly want, you know, they don't want to open it up part way and be able to get certain things through and not be able to get something essential to Maryland agriculture and actually mid-Atlantic agriculture on up into Pennsylvania and certainly Delaware and parts of Virginia. So at the moment, I don't have any more news than that. I think there, there certainly can't be any better people working on it than the folks than the experts that they've brought in at this point, Chris. All right, good deal. So I believe you sent some pictures in to us. Can you explain what these pictures are? Yeah, so we had, I believe last week, I might have been sharing, of course, that's just a really weedy field of wheat, which is uh, something we're seeing a lot of winter weeds, a lot of winter annuals. The good news for the many fruit growers in our area is we had a freeze a couple weeks ago, uh, might have been right before last Tuesday, 
and uh, that didn't hurt anything. A little bit of uh, damage on a couple of those blossoms if I had taken a better picture of them, but certainly nothing of any serious damage. So the fruit growers, again, never sure whether the next cold snap's coming, but they dodge that. But again, that, that wheat field is one of the reasons you're seeing that folks are anxious to get back out into the wheat fields. For whatever reason, this winter was a great winter to grow weeds in our wheat field. And we need to get them, need, need to get them cleaned up. Absolutely. Ben, really do appreciate you taking time to be with us this morning. That is Ben Hooshin. He is with in the mill in Maryland. Stick with us. We're going to go away, take a real quick commercial break. We're going to come back and talk some more cattle and see what they're doing. Stay with us. <laughs> 